I've had quite a few people asking me to show them how exactly I go about color grading. So here we are. Over a couple of years, I've developed a really simple, straightforward method to color grade inside of DaVinci Resolve. And for the most part, my node tree structure stays exactly the same. Obviously, not every single grade is exactly the same and a few things do change here and there. But for the most part, this is my standard basic node tree that I'm going to walk you through today. We are going to be going from this to this, before and after. And let me just show you something very quickly. I've just disabled the last node in the node tree, the one labeled LUT. This is where the creative LUT will always go, at the end of the grade. Up until this point, we've gone through exposure correction, white balance, power windows, skin tone adjustment, and use the CST or color space transform tool. At this stage, the image is sitting in Rec 709. And as soon as I turn on the creative LUT, boom, that's where the final look comes to life. Same thing here, turn off the LUT, you're in Rec 709. Turn it on and you've got your final look. So let me take you through step by step. Let's take this shot over here and I'll walk you through the process of building it from scratch. First, I'm going to delete all of these existing serial nodes and now we can start fresh. Now, because I've done this for years, I've got the order pretty locked in. So here's how it goes. First and foremost, we wanna put in the CST or the Color Space Transform tool. So what I'm gonna do is hold down Alt, press S to add a new serial node. Head over to the effects panel grab the color space transform tool and drop it onto that node. This footage was shot in S-Log3 on the Sony FX3. So the input color space is Sony S Gamut 3 dot Cine. The input gamma is S-Log3. The output color space is Rec 709 and the output gamma is Gamma 2.4. This is for broadcast. So I'm essentially telling DaVinci Resolve this is what camera I shot in, in what gamma I shot it in, and this is my delivery. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to transform the footage into Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Then I'll label this node CST so that we know what the node is and move it to the end of the node tree. Step number two, add another serial node. So I'm going to go Alt and S on a Mac, label this LU. T, and this will hold our final creative LUT or look. I'm going to leave it off for now and I'll come back to it a little bit later. Step number three, add another serial just before the CST node and drag it to the start of the node tree. Next, I'm going to label it EXP. Next, I'm gonna to go to the primaries or color wheels tab. And I'm gonna use the lift wheel to bring down the shadows just to add some more contrast into the image. Remember the lift wheel stands for the shadows or the darkest parts of the image. Then I'm going to come over here to the gain wheel, which is also for the highlights and I'm going to adjust as needed. For me, what I'm going to do is just bring those highlights a little bit down because I can see on the histogram that those highlights are peaking ever so slightly. They're not clipping like losing information, but they're a bit high for what I like. At the end of the day here, small adjustments go a long way. We're looking for a balanced histogram and a balanced image. Step number four, I'm going to add another node and I'm going to label it WB. Then I'm going to come over here and use the white balance eyedropper in the primaries tab. Click on a neutral part of the image. In this case, it's the subject's shirt. So I'm gonna choose the whitest part of the image, which is the shirt, and DaVinci Resolve will auto adjust the temperature and the tint. And if you see fit, you can tweak it further if you need to, but usually DaVinci Resolve does a really good job and gets you quite close. Step number five, I'm gonna add another serial and I'm going to label it PW. Then I'm going to go to the Windows tab and add a circular mask over the subject's face, feather it out using the red handle. Then I'm going to go to curves and my intention here is to make sure that in the center of this window, feathered out, I'm going to lift the exposure just a little bit to make our subject or point of interest stand out. So what I'm gonna do on the curves tab here is lift the midtones to brighten that face. Look what an amazing job it does. 
Next, I go to the tracker tab and track the window to the subject's movement. Make sure that the zoom, rotate, and perspective 3D are disabled. They're just unnecessary and slow your computer way down. Once it's tracked, right click and go to add node and add outside node. This outside node affects everything on the outside of the window that's on the subject's face. In this node, I'm going to use the curves once again to slightly darken the background. This technique really draws the viewer's attention in towards the point of interest. So in this case, the artist in the car. All right, there we go, that looks great. Step number six, skin tone adjustment. So I'm gonna add another serial, Alt S, and I'm going to label it skin. Then I'm going to come down here to the qualifier tool to sample the subject's skin tone. Click the highlight button to see what's selected. The highlight button is just at the top of the monitor. Once you've selected the skin, you want to refine that selection by adjusting the hue, saturation, and luminance controls. You need to go into each of these and fine tune that selection. Next, I come into matte finesse and I denoise and I work on the clean black over here and I also add a touch of blur. So now that's refined my selection of the skin tones really nicely, I'm happy with that. Then in the primaries or color wheels, I reduce the mid-tone detail very slightly. Now you may be asking yourself, why are you doing that, Carl? Well, I do this and I set it to around 10 because it softens the skin and it gives it that sort of polished music video feel. I like it and so do my clients, so that's why I reduce the detail. Next, step number seven, the exciting part, the creative LUT, the final step. Now I head back to that LUT that we initially created earlier. I right click on it, I go down to LUT, and then I choose my LUT. You can choose whatever creative LUT you desire, but obviously I'm using my own LUT, the GOAT LUT, which you can grab from the link in the description. Shameless plug, sorry. Once applied, uh, you can see that it looks pretty cool, but for me, this uh, this creative LUT is really intense straight out of, out of the gate. And what you need to do is fine tune it and, and just bring down that intensity a little bit. All you have to do is go into the key tab and adjust the key output. What I do is I bring it all the way down to 0%, so 0% intensity, and I slowly bring it up. Full intensity is too strong, but there we go. Watch the monitor as you tweak and stop where the image feels just right. Hey, and that's looking good. And that's our final look. And that's it from S-Log3 to Rec 709 to a beautiful stylized look with a creative LUT. So just to recap the full process, pretty simple for the standard note tree that I always follow myself. Exposure, white balance, power windows, skin, CST or color space transform, and then creative LUT. If you want to test out this exact process, you can download raw S-Log3 footage from my store. And then if you want to grab the creative LUT that I used in this tutorial, you can also download that from the store. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please like, comment, and subscribe. YouTube really likes it when you show it that you enjoy my content. That will allow me to produce more content like this. And if you didn't enjoy this video, it's cool. You can just bounce. Until next time, guys. Cheers.